happy Monday, guys. Corinna Coffin here, Spartan Protein Athlete and Registered Dietitian. And I wanted to kick off the week with you all making our stovetop popcorn recipe. This is way better than getting store-bought popcorn that you're just doing in the microwave. One, you get these giant bags. I mean, around four or five dollars, depending on um, the brand you get. And I mean, there's so many servings in here. We're gonna be making a quarter cup of kernels today, and it's going to make cups and cups of popcorn. So that's one of the great pluses of this. You can also do a ton of toppings, which I'll get into in a second, but let's start with the foundation here. It's going to be oil and kernels first. Now I'm gonna use um, coconut oil because it is it can tolerate a much higher heat than butter, olive oil, um, and canola oils. Other, actually, I think canola oil is okay, but you want to get um, an oil that can tolerate a high heat. So I'm using coconut oil today. What I'm going to do is add a couple tablespoons, maybe two or three. You can adjust the oil amount as you know to whatever you would like, but you you should have a little bit of oil here. I'm going to turn the stove to a medium high heat. From there, you're just going to add one or two kernels to the bottom while the stove top heats up. And then you'll hear a pop, so we have to listen closely here, but the moment we one of these kernels pops, that's when we know it's hot enough to add the entire cup full, okay? So I'm gonna be listening out for that while I chat a little bit longer about different toppings. Um, but again, medium high heat here. We just have our oil and one to three kernels in there. So not a ton. Let's get into different types of popcorn. So today I'm actually going to make a kettle corn because that's one of my favorites. Um, I did make a batch right before this using nutritional yeast, which was delicious. I used that ingredient for our cauliflower mac and cheese. So you can see it's a yellow kind of flaky mixture. I talked about this last time, but it's high in protein, has a ton of B vitamins in there, high in iron, just a great overall addition to pretty much any dish you want to make, but popcorn especially. So we have this on the side. You can, you can use it, you can not. Again, I'm doing the kettle corn today, but I just wanted to show you all some options. Chocolate chips, we can absolutely add these to our kettle corn if we want to make it a little bit more, um, a little bit more of a chocolatey taste. Cinnamon is great. Um, maple syrup. So I thought about using this today because we are going to use sugar as our kettle corn to get the sweetness for our kettle corn but I do want to try it with maple syrup one day. Um, you can also just use liquid toppings like this at the end um, and just drizzle it over the cooked warm popcorn. It can get a little soggy that way, so some people um, don't suggest doing that, but I think it would be probably totally fine, especially if you're going to be eating it right away. So various options here. We're going to be using the salt too because kettle corn is a, a sweet and salty kind of mixture here. Our oil is coated at the bottom of a pan. I'm pretty sure one kernel is about to pop. And let's talk about, while we're here, let's talk about this pot because this is just what I have that has a, a cover and you're definitely gonna wanna use a pot that has a lid. Oops, we got a pop. Pause that thought. So once you get the first pop, you're going to add in I'm using a quarter cup of kernels here. Then I'm gonna add in my um, my sugar because it want, we wanna cook, oh, they're flying everywhere. Um, we want it to cook in our sugar because that's what's gonna give it that sweet taste. I'm gonna shake it around, add my lid on, give it another big shake so that that sugar and oil coat all of the kernels in there. Now at this time, we're gonna start getting a lot of popping here soon, and we're just gonna to wanna to vigorously shake this pot um, every 10 to 15 seconds, just to make sure we're getting some turnover there um, with the kernels. I'm gonna leave a little bit 
I'm gonna leave those holes in my lid facing out so that the, some of the steam can come out. As you can hear, it's starting to pop. I think this is one of the greatest, most fun parts about making your own stovetop popcorn. I mean, it's pretty cool to see a little kernel turn into a nice fluffy um, popped corn there. Great activity for kids too. So, I have to shake it vigorously every 10 to 15 seconds. And when we stop, our stopping point is when you can count anywhere from one to three seconds between pops. So you'll, we'll start getting a slow down there. And once it has slowed, that's when we know, it's kind of like in the microwave when you're listening to that pop. If, once it starts slowing, if you go too much beyond that, we're gonna get burnt popcorn. So we're gonna be listening out for that. Um, like I said, we only used a quarter cup of kernels and it, you'll see how much it makes. It's gonna make quite a few cupfuls. Um, so it's perfect for uh, the whole family. You guys can, um, you know, one of the greatest things about popcorn is that it's a whole grain. We don't really think about corn being a whole grain, but it is. Five grams of fiber and three tablespoons of these, um, of the kernels. I have to listen to, make sure it's not getting too long between um, pops here. All right, I think it's ready. So what I'm gonna do is take the lid off. I'm putting it out on a cookie sheet here because we do wanna break up some of the parts that have stuck due to the sugar. So, turn the stove off. Got a, <coughs> got a little crispy just because some of the sugar, I think you have to be careful with the sugar too because if you don't use enough oil with it, then it's going to burn a little bit. So I have a couple crispy pieces, but that's okay. Um, I just put it on this cookie sheet. Like I said, we're just breaking up some of the harder pieces that, have, that are stuck from the sugar. Just a few clumps in there. And then at this point, because it's hot and it's all laid out on the sheet, now we can add our salt. So we'll add the salt at the end. Just gonna sprinkle a little bit over. And at this point, you can always drizzle more things over. You can add the chocolate chips. If I wanted to add some maple syrup, that would be fine too. Um, but this is pretty much it. One thing I did learn, if you guys are like, I like the stove cup, the stove top popcorn idea, but maybe you're not a kettle corn fan. You can do a butter popcorn for sure. Um, the one thing that I did learn is you have to use clarified butter instead of regular butter because again, we talked about coconut oil having um, a high, it can tolerate high heat. So with regular butter, it can't. So that's why it has to be clarified. So just make sure um, you're using that and then you can use that instead of the oil at the bottom. But as I was saying before, the popcorn started all popping everywhere. Popcorn is a whole grain. Like I said, five grams of fiber per three tablespoons of raw kernels here. Um, 27 grams of carbs, it's a great source of carbohydrates. Um, and actually four grams of protein. So, I mean, if you add the nutritional yeast in with that, which is also high in protein, now you're getting kind of a high protein popcorn snack, which you know I don't think anyone would complain about. So I hope you guys give this a try. There's plenty of options for toppings. Again, this is just great. You're stuck home watching a lot of TV shows and you know what better way to eat a healthy snack than doing stovetop popcorn. All right, we'll see you guys next time. Thanks for joining.